my name is Tom and I'm currently on a mission to walk from John O'Groats in the northeast of Scotland all the way to Land's End in the southwest of Cornwall. This week sees me try to get past my most urban and built up areas so far. I need to weave my way between Liverpool and Manchester. I'll be crossing into Wales and walking along the Welsh coast path all the way round to the Snowdonia National Park. Good morning guys, I've just camped up here in the corner of someone's field. I want to get going now though because there's not really any hedges around here, so I'm kind of visible and uh, I don't want to outstay my welcome, which I don't think I ever really had. All packed up and leaving without a trace. It is around just after 7, I think 7.20 or something, and we're heading off. It's really, really misty today. I am currently somewhere in between Preston and Wigan. I've been making my way south following the canals and the canals have provided me an excellent route to follow, giving me a little rural corridor even through some of the cities and stuff. Over the last three days I've walked the whole length of the Lancaster Canal. It's really nice for a Sunday walk or something but after three days it becomes a bit monotonous. Often you're hedged in as well, so you can't see the landscape. I've now actually joined on with the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. We've walked a long way. I've made a lot of progress along the map, but it's been a bit tiring just walking along canals non-stop. So my next section from Preston, down past the Mersey, down to Cheshire, this is gonna be one of the most built up sections of the walk. It is coming up to half ten. I've been following this canal now for a couple of hours and the sun is burning through to reveal really lovely blue skies. I think it's going to be a scorcher today. This fleece is definitely coming off soon. But I'm just approaching the outskirts of Wigan and I'm hopefully going to pass all the way through Wigan without too much trouble. You might notice I'm not wearing glasses and I actually managed to get some contact lenses sent out uh, to somewhere near Lancaster which is brilliant. To be honest, walking with glasses every day, I was just, I was feeling really fed up with them. I wanted a change, particularly when it's rainy. It just, your vision's so obscured by the raindrops. It feels like the canals have allowed me to skirt around the busy center of Wigan. And I'm already, feels like I'm heading out again. I haven't walked far out of Wigan and there are these beautiful ponds. I gotta say, I've been, uh, pleasantly surprised walking through this area. I don't know really what I was expecting, but it's been much greener, much more pleasant than I imagined. This is a little nature reserve just on the outskirts of Wigan. The Wigan flashes, and it's really lovely. <laughs> Guys, it is so hot. I actually can't believe it. I can't believe it's gonna get hotter during the week as well. Makes it very difficult to keep walking, so I've had to have a break. It is hard to pull yourself away from a pub when the weather's like this, to put your bag back on and start walking again. It's uh, getting kind of late, it's five o'clock. The sun is getting pretty low now, but uh, I've basically walked the whole way across Warrington alongside this canal and it's like a park the whole way, which is class. This is the River Mersey and we're over and leaving Warrington behind. I've been walking and walking. I made it to my third canal of the day. Wow, there's <laughs> a lot of canals. Uh, this canal is Cheshire Ring Canal and uh, I'm going to be following this for a little bit. I, what I really need to do is find somewhere to camp up. It is around 8 o'clock and the sun is going down. It's actually a really nice sunset and um, I'm just holding off putting up my tent, hoping that we lose the light a little bit because it's not that private. It's not too bad. No, that is the canal and I think they can see me but hopefully they don't mind. And then this is the road. Kind of dips down into this corner. Um, so I'm just thinking in this corner, I'll be a little bit more hidden, a little bit more out of the way. Oh, I'm getting pretty hungry. Um, I think I'm gonna cook some food and then maybe put my tent up. I had a little look at my map and I think I've done 28 miles today. So it's a, been a pretty big day. I've walked pretty far, but on the canals, you can 
really make up quite a lot of distance. Uh, tomorrow, I mean, Wales is about 30 miles away, so I'm not sure if I'm going to make it there tomorrow or not. It'd be really nice to try and get to the coast as soon as possible because it's just so warm at the moment. Do you know what? While that's brewing, I don't think anyone's going to see me here, so I'm going to put my tent up now, um, even though it's still a little bit light. That's me. I'm going to turn in, eat my couscous, and uh, say goodbye to the outside world. It's going to be another beautiful day. I want to get this tent down as quick as possible, just so we're not in someone else's field. My legs are feeling pretty sore today. All packed up, so we're now back on the canal. I want to keep my voice down, just so I'm not waking up everyone who's asleep in their canal boats. But there's something so peaceful about the canal. The birds are singing. The sun is just coming over the trees. decided to take a slightly more direct route to Chester um, and that does mean I've been walking through slightly more urban areas I'm walking through Frodsham I think that's what it's called and uh, it's just like a nice little town but it is baking hot today it is so incredibly warm to be honest this whole area uh, this whole week's worth of walking I kind of written off as a big sprawling urban area but it's actually really green I've managed to stay on canals and footpaths almost the whole way but I will be really glad to get back into the hills and be able to drink from rivers again and uh, camp wherever I like. This is actually the footpath, I'm on the footpath just run straight through the middle of this crop of corn. Um, it is so hot today, it feels like it's like maybe 30 degrees, it feels like I'm walking in Spain rather than in Northern England. So this route that I'm taking is called the Longster Trail and it doesn't look like anyone's walked it in a while because it is directly through this patch of stingers which is over head height. I'm going to see if I can get over the hedge. Oh, climbing through a hedge. Oh, hopefully it's not like that the whole way because that was pretty tough. This path definitely hasn't been walked very often and I'm just walking through the middle of a bramble patch. Oh, this is when I wish I had some trousers. Oh, my legs, they're so stung. I've just been trudging through things like this, just came through there and it's been pretty, uh, pretty overgrown, pretty stinging nettles and brambles everywhere. The sun is setting. It is such a gorgeous evening. I um, stumbled upon a pub. I wandered into the village of Great Barrow. I was so hot, it was so crazy hot. So I decided to stop for a pint. The locals were just welcoming me in. Um, the barman even bought me a pint. They were like trying to find places for me to sleep tonight. Someone offered me their caravan. Uh, just like above and beyond, like so friendly. So I just decided to stay with them for a while tonight. So I stay in England for one more night and tomorrow I'm going to head into Wales. So all packed away, that was my little spot. I had a bit of a leisurely morning because I was so well hidden. I'm not very far from the path, but it just felt so private. Last night was my last night in England, at least until I get down to the southwest. It's been way greener than I imagined it would be, like really lush countryside. And everyone I've met has just been so nice. I've got a very short walk into Chester now. Out the other side and I'll be into Wales. I've just walked through the city of Chester and that, uh, these are the city walls. So I've walked all the way through. It's only a small city, but a very pretty and medieval city. I'm actually gonna be joining on the Welsh coast path almost immediately because Chester is right on the border. We're not actually in Wales yet. Uh, but this is now the Welsh coast path. I'm going to be following this for the next few days before I head south and climb Mount Snowdon. I've walked down this long straight road following the River Dee and I've arrived at the border with Wales. What I assume is meant to be a dragon's egg, but it looks like a giant silver potato. <laughs> but yeah, I've made it into Wales. Uh, we're leaving England and we won't be back in England again until the bottom of Wales, back into the southwest. It's always exciting crossing over into a new country. So I'm actually heading north, sort of in the opposite direction to where I want to go. But then I can follow the 
north coast the whole way along. The weather is just unbelievable. The sun is beating down. It's uh, high 20s, maybe 30 degrees. I'm crossing over the River Dee. The river widens, becomes really wide, and this side of the river becomes the Wirral, which is that bit of land just below Liverpool, and this side becomes Wales and the Welsh coast. This section of the walk feels quite industrial. There's this like forest of uh, big electrical pylons and there's some big factories and stuff. I continue my walk up along the Dee and you can see it start to spread out into these really wide salt marshes. And over on the other side is the Wirral, that's all England there. And uh, yeah, looking out across the border and I can see the sea over there, which is so nice. It is so nice just walking beside these big salt marshes as the sun's setting. It is so nice to see the sea again and this sunset is just so beautiful. The weather is immense. Ah, oh, loving it. I've walked a little bit further on to Bagult. Bagult, I think it's called. And there's a little stone circle in this little park overlooking the water. But this stone circle is actually a modern recreation. I think I'm just going to put my tent up here. Hopefully no one will mind. I'll be gone in the morning. Waking up once again. I'm still getting used to these incredibly sunny days. Um, the estuary is looking amazing out in front of us and I had a really good night's sleep there. As I continue northwards, uh, the estuary just keeps getting wider. And this is, must be the biggest like mud plains I've ever seen. It's so extensive, it must be bird paradise. I'm walking towards this huge hulking ship, which has just been left on the mud flats uh, to apparently rot out. It's called the Duke of Lancaster. I can't actually get that close to the big ship. I wanted to have a little look in the windows see if I could see inside, but it was too reflective, I couldn't see in. I just walked past this place and it looked, it looked like a charity shop, but they actually have a little cafe in there as well. It's a little uh, village cafe and it was brilliant. Uh, it was £2.50 for some beans and toast and I was talking to them all about uh, my journey and they gave me a free tango and a free coffee and they gave me extra toast as well because they wanted to feed me up. I've actually been walking north for the last like two days which is a little bit uh, frustrating I guess. It feels like I'm walking in the wrong direction. Getting to the point where uh, the estuary meets the sea and it seems quite busy there's quite a few people and the car park's full but the coast path is heading straight onto the beach so I'm guessing that for the next little while I'll be walking along the beach. So this is the point of air and this is where the river that I've been following, the River D, where it opens up into the estuary and then the estuary meets the sea. What a novelty of walking on the beach. This is the actual route for the uh, Welsh coast path. There's these big uh, like pillars in the sand and they've got signs on just pointing the way along the beach. So it's like right down the middle of the beach and it's quite fun just walking on the sand. Wow, look at this expanse of sand. It's just so huge. The tide must absolutely race in here. The beach has given way to sand dunes. Beaches just stretch out on and on. It's gonna be kind of difficult for me to find somewhere to camp. It's kind of built up uh, with like holiday resorts and stuff all the way along this coastline. This area here is actually sort of the least built up. It's got dunes instead of like a town behind it. So I'm thinking maybe I stop somewhere here head into the dunes and put my tent up. I've retreated into sand dunes. I think this is where I'm gonna set up my little tent. It seems semi-private and I should, I'll leave fairly early. Uh, but this sunset is the most incredible sunset I've seen in such a long time. It's so beautiful. It has been so long since I've just sat and watched a sunset and it's so nice. It just feels so good for you. All packed up again. It was actually a really good little camp spot, uh, despite it being about two metres away from the 
promenade. It actually felt really private. I also have had to find uh, some accommodation. Uh, I need to edit this video. It's kind of difficult. It's difficult for like camping. There's loads of like van accommodation and camper van, but not really for tents. I found somewhere, but it is in Snowdonia National Park. It's actually 55 miles away from me now. Is that right? Was it miles? Maybe it's kilometers. Oh, it's kilometers, 54 kilometers away. Okay, that's doable. I was a bit worried that I'd booked this accommodation and it was so far away, but it sh that should be doable. Uh, so I've booked this accommodation. I've got three nights in a tent. I'm ready to get back in the wilds now. I've been kind of surprised at just how built up this coastline has been. Uh, it all feels quite resorty, like uh, lots of static homes, uh, big fun fairs and arcades. The weather is nowhere near as nice as the last couple of days. Uh, it's not very sunny, but it's super duper muggy. So I've actually just stopped for a Rio, my favorite fizzy drink. And I found out Twisters are now vegan. So, oh, really pleased about that. Let's have a Twister. As I approach Conway, you can see beyond it, the hills, and that is the Snowdonia National Park. My plan is to get through the town, out the other side and up onto those hills tonight. Uh, so I've still got a fair amount of walking to do. My legs are pretty tired and it is really sticky and humid. I'm coming into Conway and this feels very different to the everywhere else I've been on the north coast of Wales. It's very dramatic, there's hills behind it, there's a big castle, there's a little fishing port. It looks super pretty. Uh, wow. Is it, this is really beautiful. The castle looks so incredible. It's so many turrets and stuff. It's all a bit ruined and spooky. And then the town itself is contained within these like the old city walls. I just couldn't resist. I've got myself a pint. Just sit and enjoy the, enjoy watching the fishermen working in the harbour. So I've been sat here drinking a beer and speaking to Iz on FaceTime. And then right next to me, this is the smallest house in Britain. Look at that. It's literally, it's like the size of me. Right, I still have an hour and a half hiking uphill uh, before I get to somewhere I can camp. I'm coming out of Conway and I'm coming pretty steep uphill. I've decided I need to get up and onto the hills tonight so that I can wild camp. I've joined on with the Cambrian Way, which is this absolutely epic walk which goes from the north of Wales all the way down to the south. Man, it has been so hot and sticky today. I'm so glad this hill was at the end of the day. I didn't think I could have done it any earlier. But even so, even now, it's still so hot, so sticky. I've got a big bag full of food, so it's heavier than usual. Ah, <sighs> come on. That was quite an intense little section. I'm dripping in sweat and my heart is pumping in my ears. <sighs> I love it. Man, I've missed the hills. I just noticed how small the castle looks. Wow, I've zipped up this hill. This hill is known as Conway Mountain. There are some incredible views from up here. Just hill after hill. You can see the island of Anglesey and then little Puffin Island over there. Wow. Man, it feels good to be back in the hills. This is what I want to be doing. This is where I want to be. We are losing the light now and I don't want to be walking around trying to put my tent up. I've just seen there's a stone circle, seven minutes walk away. So I just want to go and check out the stone circle because it'd be pretty cool to go and camp at a stone circle. So I think I've found a stone circle. It's not the most impressive one I've ever seen, uh, but there's three stones, one, two, and then there's a third. And it looks like someone's painted like a black band on them, which is really weird, but I'm really losing the light. You can see the town of uh, Conway down below us. All the lights coming on, twinkling in the distance. Oh, I'm, yeah, I think this is a nice spot. I'm gonna camp somewhere here. It's gonna be another scorcher today. It's early, but it is already so, so hot. It's crazy warm. Um, there's been this like mist in the valleys, but up here, wow. We've got a lot of walking to do today. We've got to get up and over all these hills, over to this youth hostel. Well, I've only been walking for about half an hour. It is unbelievably hot today. It's only nine o'clock. Thankfully, I found a stream. And I think this might be the only stream I pass all day looking at the OS map. So I need to fill up here. I ended up staying there for 
about an hour eating some porridge and I had a coffee. It was really nice just to have access to water and be able to uh, yeah, just use as much as I wanted. This is the most I've sweat in years. It's so steep. Oh, and the sun is just powering down. It's so hot. All I can hear is my heart beating in my ears. I've literally got beads of sweat dripping off my eyelashes, off my eyebrows, off everywhere. Those will be my last views looking back east. I'm heading westward and towards these mountains, oh, a trig point. And this is 610 meters. And in this like 30 degree heat, that's been really, really tough with this big heavy bag. I am absolutely dripping in sweat. But today, I need to climb to over a thousand meters. <sighs> wow, okay. So this is my route. I'm basically going up into these hills. But uh, before I even get up there, I have to go down first. I have to go down to about 400 meters and then uh, up again to about a thousand. So that's where we were and we've come down into the valley and then coming up the other side. It's so steep. But uh, I made it to 688 meters. So I've made back the ground I'd lost going down into the dip. Weather seems like it's really turned. There's no visibility up there. And that is exactly where I'm heading. So this is Drum, which is 770 meters. I can just see the next peak poking through the clouds. And that one is at 942. This route, the Cambrian Way, is a very difficult, a uh, high route. So it takes over all the peaks. <sighs> Jesus, is steep. I'm in amongst the clouds. <sighs> I'm just going up, 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 up. Ah, pushing up into the cloud. Oh, my legs are burning. 942 meters. Done. Ah, wow. This has been maybe my hardest day, I think. Just the heat. I think the total elevation climb today is 1,400 meters which with a big backpack uh, is not insignificant. There's a slight break in the clouds, giving us some incredible views. And it's come with a bit of wind as well. Oh, that is so nice. Just trying to stay cool. So this is the top of Carnef Llewellyn. Look at all the clouds pooling in this valley. Wow. And that ridge that is containing the clouds, that's my route. It's been a tough day. So glad there's some wind. Oh. It's like probably mid twenties and I'm a thousand meters up. My parting of the clouds was brief. I'm really glad I got some really nice views. Oh. And now I'm back in the mist. So I just have one more hill to get up, which is this one here. And uh, once I've gone up there, then it's downhill. We need to head down into the valley Wow, when the clouds break, look at that view. Man, today's been really tough, but really rewarding. The clouds have been obscuring the views, but it's been kind of cool with uh, like very atmospheric. And when the clouds do break, you get incredible views as well. But it's been tough, it's been hard going. Looking back the way we've come, you can see this ring of mountains. We're looking back at the thousand meter peaks, this one and this one that we went up and over. And we have made it to our final one, our final peak of the day. This is a really steep descent. A stream, I can get some water, please. Oh, that is so good. I've made it down into the valley. I still have a bit of walking to do. I need to get to the other side of this lake 
uh, because that's where the youth hostel is. So I've checked into the youth hostel and they've got this like camping area. This is basically just a little woodland. Oh, guys, I've had a shower. It's been so nice here. I've had the best day. It's been really nice having like the communal space. I've actually got chatting with loads and loads of people. I've had a brilliant stay here and £10 a night. Literally the best £10 I've ever spent. Um, I'm super excited. Tomorrow I head back out into the hills and Isabel's going to be joining me in one week, which means I can't rush because I'm meeting Isabel in seven days. I have a definite deadline. And because the last two weeks I've really been pushing, it means that this week in Snowdonia, I'm going to be taking my time, really enjoying the mountains here. And I cannot wait. Join me next week. We'll be taking on Snowdonia and I'll see you then.